A diver's fins kick out behind them as they approach the looming shadow at the bottom of the sea floor. Thousands of fish, hundreds of marine plants, and beautiful corals lurk on and around the structure, and as the diver approaches, they can make out the outline of a ship. Ships like this one exist all over the world, serving a new purpose at the bottom of the sea as artificial reefs. Welcome to Fast Facts Friday, my name is Eleanor. Just a quick disclaimer for a younger audience before we dive in. This story may be disturbing to some, so viewer discretion is advised. Okay everyone, let's get into it. An artificial reef is a human-created freshwater or marine benthic structure. They are typically built or placed in areas with a generally featureless bottom to promote marine life, control erosion, protect coastal areas, block ship passage, block the use of trawling nets, support reef restoration, improve aquaculture, or enhance scuba diving and surfing. Sinking ships or oil rigs or making an artificial reef from objects intended for other purposes is called an opportunity artificial reef. And if you did not know, the American ocean liner SS United States will be becoming an opportunity artificial reef in the nearby future. Stay tuned for this Sunday's episode when I give you the scoop on SS United States and her fate. The construction of artificial reefs started long ago in ancient times, and according to historian Diodorus Siculus, the Romans blocked the harbor of Lilibium during the First Punic War against the Carthaginians around 250 BC. They built their artificial reef, quote, with stones and construction material, and put poles in the channels using, quote, large timbers and anchors. Persians also participated in artificial reefs, blocking the mouth of the Tigris River to thwart Arabian pirates with an artificial reef. In 17th century Japan, artificial reefs were shown to increase fish yields and were also used for algae culture, which is a form of aquaculture involving the farming of species of algae. This began with rubble and rocks being used to grow kelp. In the United States, the earliest artificial reef recorded was built in the 1830s, when logs from huts were used off the coast of South Carolina to improve fishing. More recently, Items like old refrigerators, ditched cars, shopping carts, and out-of-service vending machines have replaced the logs in ad hoc reefs. Officially sanctioned projects have incorporated decommissioned ships like USS Oriskany, subway cars, battle tanks, oil drilling rigs, armored personnel carriers, and beehive-like reef balls. I do plan on making a video on USS Oriskany in the future. Okay, now there are numerous reasons to use an artificial reef. This ranges from the protections, enhancement, and restoration of marine ecosystems for a variety of reasons, including to support human activities like fishing, recreational diving, and surfing. Artificial reefs can be used as active restoration tools to mitigate environmental damage and habitat loss, restore degraded ecosystems like kelp forests and coral reefs, and promote biodiversity. When managing fisheries, artificial reefs might be intended to increase production of species of recreational and commercial interest, support recreational, artisanal, or commercial fisheries, and enhance fishing yield. They can also be designed for protecting benthic habitats from illegal trawling and restore fish stocks. They can even be used to protect against coastal erosion. Artificial reefs have also been developed to support ecotourism, mitigate tourism pressure on corals, and promote recreational activities like scuba diving and surfing. One example of this is the wreck of the Hilma Hooker in Bonaire. And that episode of ours is incredibly special as we have exclusive photos of the wreck. The way an artificial reef is designed and constructed really depends upon its proposed location and intended purposes. A reef designed for one specific purpose might not work in others, and at first, early artificial reefs frequently failed or were met with mixed results. More recent reviews of work from 1990 to 2020 suggest that a correctly implemented artificial reef can be useful as a tool for the restoration of marine ecosystems. Like all things in life, it's not a guarantee. Reviewers have stated the need for better before and afters, and control comparisons of artificial and natural reefs, inc increased monitoring of reefs over their lifespan, and attention to the complexity, spatial orientation, and shape of the reef substrate, among other concerns. There are a lot of factors that go into a successful artificial reef, just like a lot of work goes into successful episodes. If you are enjoying this episode and want to hear more about ships, their careers, and their wrecks, check out our main show, Shipwreck Sunday, every Sunday night at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right, my friends, let's look at some environmental concerns. 
Of course, with introducing something foreign and man-made into aquatic communities, there will always be environmental concerns and disadvantages. This includes possible physical damage to existing natural sites in the installation area, the potential to disrupt existing patterns of marine life by introducing non-native species and by attracting fish, larvae, and eggs from surrounding natural habitats, the potential for over-concentration of fish in areas where it becomes easier to catch them, leading to overfishing and long-term damages to fisheries, and the potential for the materials used to degrade and cause damage to the natural habitat. For example, the toxicity from things like oil, plastics, and paint, as well as parts of the reef breaking off and becoming ocean waste or washing onto natural reefs and beaches. Since we are talking about SS United States this Sunday, we are going to look at the potential damages she could cause to the wildlife off the coast of Destin Fort Walton Beach. The hope is that SS United States will enhance, quote, our community's status as a premier diving and fishing destination, according to Paul Mixon, the Okaloosa County Board Chairman. This makes me angry, but I'll get more into that on Sunday. All of the asbestos was previously removed from SS United States in the early 1990s, and this damaged the ship. However, as of 2016, she still retained 90% of her hull integrity despite sitting and awaiting restoration that would never come. Some of her original fittings have been removed and preserved, so at least we still have these things. However, she still has chipping lead paint on the outside of the ship, and though it hasn't been shown to have an impact on the waterways she's traversed over the course of her career, fish consuming this lead could kill fish or have a negative impact on people who then eat this fish. Her oil and fuel have been drained to avoid oil spillage, so that risk has been mostly mitigated. However, since she will be the largest artificial reef in the world, there is the potential for physical disruption when she is sunk in her intended location, which is still not exactly determined at this point. The physical disruption could harm native species already located in the area intended for SS United States, or she could draw a huge number of certain types of fish, which could crowd out other species, or draw massive amounts of fishing, which could deplete fisheries. Not saying this will happen, but the possibility is there. There are numerous artificial reefs in Florida, some successful and some not. One of the most well-known and successful is the former aircraft carrier USS Oriskany sunk off the coast of Pensacola, as well as numerous other former military ships that were either scuttled here or intentionally sunk with the intent of becoming an artificial reef. SS United States will join a plethora of artificial reefs off the coast of Florida, with the intent of drawing more diving, surfing, and tourism to the area. Artificial reefs have been around for hundreds of years and can be incredibly useful for human purposes as well as the restoration of natural marine life populations. Corals continue to face difficulties due to climate change, but artificial reefs can give them a fighting chance. Hopefully, the fate of SS United States will give a new refuge to sea life and her legacy can continue in a different capacity. If you liked that story and wanted to hear something similar, check out our Ocean Liners playlist in the cards. Stay tuned this Sunday for the much-needed update on SS United States, an incredible American ocean liner facing a fate at the bottom of the ocean. Thank you for tuning into Fast Facts Friday, have a lovely weekend, and we'll see you next time.